I wanted to express some of my views that I gained from receiving mental health services and working in the field, okay? Um, what I did discover, and I will explain this, um, a lot of people that are on the receiving end of mental health assume that there's an us versus them idea with the staff of these places. You're absolutely 100% right. One thing I learned, especially where I worked, was that the staff do not like certain people, and they also have an idea, they do play favorites quite a bit. In fact, one of the people on my caseload was a very abusive man uh, that his therapist fell for his charisma and thought that he was just, you know, the best thing since sliced bread, he just needed some help, blah, 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 blah. And another person on my caseload was actually his female roommate that he would beat up constantly and throw things at and things like that. But the therapist that was his therapist also happened to be my supervisor for a time. And it was very difficult for me to be honest with her about this gentleman's behavior simply because uh, she had her own preconceived ideas regarding him. Uh, there's also the elderly woman that worked there that was a devout Catholic. She worked there and she would basically judge the people. Um, she would, everything was sexual perversion this, or the person was a scumbag, or the person was a womanizer. Now this person that was devoutly Catholic, she also um, hated her husband and basically blamed her husband for her not succeeding and, you know, a, a man hater, if you will. Um, but one of my clients happened to be into bondage and sadomasochism, and she chastised the young lady and said that her problems were due entirely to her sexual perversion, not any of the actual material issues in her life, like a lack of job, lack of a home, lack of money. Those things didn't matter. No, her issues were all revolving around her own, quote, um, sexual depravity. And uh, I don't need a degree in therapy to tell you, but a therapist's job is not to judge the person, but to get to the bottom of why they may participate in sexual depravity. Uh, the coup de grace is um, my, my supervisor, my main supervisor, who was the head of outpatient at this place. Um, when she fired me, I was going to go to human resources and she was so loony that she actually came down. Well, I've, I had an older model van at the time and it had to warm up. So she started shoving the front of my van and smacking the front of my van. And I had to explain to her three times. I said, you know, if you don't stop doing this, I'm going to have to call the police on you. So the third time must have been a charm, and she smacked and banged on the side of my van and smacked my rearview mirror and window as I was pulling away, then spread around the workplace that I had tried to run her over, despite the fact that I was in my van long before she was even there, and that she had gotten in front of my van, shoved my van, attacked my van, um, and I had to cut the wheel all the way to the right and try and go around her and constantly remind her you know, if you don't get out of the way of my vehicle, I'm going to have to call the police on you. <laughs> so that's another theory that a lot of people that receive mental health have, is that the people that work in the field are crazier than the people that receive the help. And I can say that undoubtedly I think that is the case. Uh, also, the other head of outpatients was a, an obese loon with technicolor hair. Um, I've talked about her in the past. Um, she was so stupid that she didn't realize the reason that Spanish-speaking people uh, weren't coming to our organization to get, you know, talk therapy in Spanish was because we didn't have anybody that spoke Spanish to give talk therapy. Talk. Keep that in mind. It's talk therapy. So <laughs> she, she thought it was some big monstrous cultural issue. Um, and it, it happens to be these people are crazy. They're loony. A lot of them are, um, if they're white, they're self-hating white people. There's a lot of uh, effeminate and homosexual men in, in these things. And I'm going to leave links to some of this. Um, basically, 
everything that the general public thinks about mental health, you tend to find is pretty true. Every stereotype about how mental health is run and everything else, once you get in there and you work in that field, uh, a couple things, you, you will lose all hope. That's one thing. You will see that mental health is a sham. Uh, people tend not to get any better, ever. And uh, medication, I, I can honestly say, 100% of the people I worked with that received medication did not get better, and almost all of them got worse. The only exception that I noticed is when people are first put... Now, let me remind you, I'm not a medical doctor or a mental health professional. But, this is my opinion from what I saw. But what I saw was, when the people are initially put on medication, maybe for a week or two, they have some sort of a placebo effect, where they're giddy, and they, they keep believing the, the hypnotism of the, the, you know, I don't want to say hypnotism, but the brainwashing of the place. The therapist will say, you're looking great. The medication must really be working. And the doctor will say, you are doing great. The medication must be working. And it, it's kind of like a placebo effect. But after that, it kind of dies down and the person does much worse. And uh, that's what I noticed. Um, also in myself, that's the thing. I never really had any placebo effect from the medications. I just never got any better from the medications, with the exception of lithium. I will say that. Lithium did help to stabilize my mood, but the thing was I did eventually have an allergic reaction to it, and also uh, there were medical side effects to it. Is it really worth the medical side effects to take care of something that you can take care of with meditation and exercise and things of that nature? I don't think so. Um, so that could be a big part of some of the issues I have now, but also I, because I was teaching karate years ago and taking karate, the lithium, I had a lithium imbalance a couple of times because of the sweating from the martial arts. Uh, so that was a regular occasion with me to have bad issues with the lithium. And so ultimately I did, I tried to go back on it years later when I was homeless and I, I had an allergic reaction to it. My whole face swelled up and everything else. Um, so what I will say is these, uh, most of what people suspect about mental health is true. The place I worked was uniquely terrible though. That's also true. A lot of the stuff that went on there doesn't go on at other mental health places. Um, the place was run horribly by complete nepotism and Idiots, absolute idiots. Like I said, the woman that didn't understand that somebody that is a native Spanish speaker cannot speak English. They can't, you can't get talk therapy in English if you can't talk in English or understand English. <laughs> but that's the, that's the mindset of how stupid these people were that I worked with. And you also have a lot of things like, for example, a lot of therapists will be, you know, in their early 20s or uh, mid-20s and they're still living at home with mommy and daddy. Some in their 40s living at home with mommy and daddy telling their clients, you know, well, you are lazy because you're on Social Security. But meanwhile, that person is actually independent, lives on their own, and is doing quite well where the therapist is 42, goes out drinking every night, and lives with mommy and daddy. So, I mean, it's, it's really, really bizarre when you start looking at the layers. And they, they justify a lot of what they say. That you will see these mental health issues in this staff where they will justify why their life is the way their life is. But there's no reason for their client to have a life the way it is. Mm -mm, no excuses there. And that's all for this video. I'm going to leave some links in the description.